بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم I welcome you all today in this lecture session I will give a lecture on the history of renaissance so as a student of history I can say that the history of renaissance is very important because before renaissance Europe was divided and Europe faced many problems mainly wars Europe had 10 year long war 70 year war 50 years war and Europe empire different empires kings they were highly divided and there was another division regarding religion also so at the darkest point of time in history renaissance occurred in Europe but before Renaissance, actually the Muslim world was enlightened. And the Muslim thinkers, uh, they were dominating the educational system, innovation. But when Renaissance occurred in 1300, uh, in the year 1300, from 1300 to 1600, Within this time, the Renaissance occurred and then the Europeans picked up the idea of Renaissance and they improved their knowledge. They tried to question things, generated new knowledge and used this knowledge gathered from Renaissance and then Europe became developed. And now we see Europe is much developed. But actually this was not the case before Renaissance. So that's why Renaissance history is very important. It is not only important from the European history perspective, it is also very important for us also. That how Renaissance occurred, where it occurred, and what is the impact that Renaissance created amongst nations, especially in Europe. So as I have already mentioned that Renaissance happens between year 1300 to year 1600 and the beginning of the Renaissance it actually began with the assistance from the wealthy people and Renaissance started in Italy. So the wealthy of northern Italy that people who did trade there are places like Venice and Florence where the big merchants of Italian merchants contacted Byzantine and Muslim empires and eventually they flourished I already mentioned that before Renaissance it, Europe was not developed but the Muslim world, Byzantine Empire, Muslim Empire, these were the improved people. So, when they came in contact with the Italian people, especially Florence and Venice, due to trade and commerce, they generated new ideas, new thoughts, and that's how the people of northern Italy suddenly became enlightened. This is the beginning of Renaissance, very important. And as you can see, the map of Europe during Renaissance actually, the light of Renaissance, the enlightenment started in Italy gradually it spread all over Europe. So the first step of Renaissance is the trade. Trade created a wealthy class in Italy who became patrons of arts. And during this time, big merchants 
especially one family was very renowned they were known as the medici family the family of medici these were the people who were bankers i would like to add here that banking started in italy the idea of bank started in italy so this medici family was a banker family so initially they established banks they used to give loans to people and they have generated huge profits by their newly formed banks so this medici family of florence they became wealthy doing banking wool manufacturing mining trade and other ventures and they became patrons for arts and during this time michelangelo was a very prominent artist he was one of the artists who were benefited from the medici patronage so during renaissance what was the lifestyle of the european there were shops and businesses on ground floors there were centers of business while well, these centers were crowded and there were a lot of people visiting these places garbage was thrown onto the streets i have told you before renaissance europe was not enlightened now europe is very neat and clean but that time before renaissance they were not clean you see garbage was thrown onto the streets in europe that was the lifestyle they had wealthy people had large homes but with little privacy and the servants used to sleep on the floor so during renaissance lucrezia borgia the famous lady she was a famous person during renaissance her father was pope alexander 7 Alexander VI, and her husband was Alfonso Deste. This Lucrezia Borgia, she was actually a patron of many arts, and she donated money to the artists. She was a gorgeous patron, and she was a mother of seven. so we discussed effect of trade and how it assisted renaissance next i'll talk about the classicism the revival of greek and roman achievements and writing during renaissance so once renaissance started the renewed interest in greek and roman culture and values generated Michelangelo's sculpture as you can see here the david it reflects the blending of religious ideas with greek and roman humanist philosophy you can see the idealized figure and accurate proportion of different muscles and body is seen in this sculpture this is a famous sculpture of michelangelo and it is known as the sculpture of david so next outcome of renaissance is that during renaissance people started questioning the traditional wisdom this is known as the questioning spirits as an example i can cite that Francesco Petrarch was a Renaissance writer and a Florentine humanist. He collected Greek and Roman writings like the poetry of Virgil and Homer and wrote secular poetry about love and life. 
in here and now and not just the afterlife so they have raised question on traditional mindsets and knowledge we can see this questioning spirit amongst writers and thinkers and they began to criticize the ancient ways and values erasmus wrote praise of folly which ridiculed the church and its corrupt officials and clergy Cervantes wrote Don Quixote who poked fun at chivalry and the culture of medieval Europe so people were enlightened and asking question of the previous knowledge next comes the intellectual property and creativity during renaissance Johannes Gutenberg he invented the movable typing printing press and making written materials available to multitudes in order to flourish intellectual property and creativity this invention was very important which Johannes Gutenberg invented a movable typing press and as you can see the press you are seeing in the slide is much similar that what is now we see in the modern press moving on during this time copernicus wrote in his famous article that the earth rotates around the sun but he was ridiculed because at that time people knew sun rotates the earth but as we can now know that actually the earth rotates the sound and copernicus was right copernicus had high intellect and during that time he wrote article and he said that it is the earth which rotates the around the sun so next we have to talk about Machiavelli who wrote his famous book The Prince in which he advised merchants to concentrate on power and he also wrote The End Justifies the Means and Machiavelli's idea have been used by despots to justify abusive use of power In fact Machiavelli wrote his book Prince for the hegemons to continue their hegemony for the empires to rule the people but unfortunately uh, other than empires there were many despots who also used this idea the idea of Machiavelli and Uh, they also tried to rule different parts of europe but however machiavelli's book was very much part of this intellectual property okay. next we should talk about leonardo da vinci who was the ultimate renaissance man he not only produced masterpiece painting but also had great accomplishments in the fields of science engineering and architecture in fact leonardo da vinci was a genius and it was him who actually brought enlightenment during renaissance there were many intellectual property of leonardo da vinci as you can see on the slide the uh, mona lisa was drawn by leonardo da vinci and it was a mystery painting for long before ai could solve this puzzle that who actually mona lisa was 
However, it was a great painting during that era and still it is a very great and powerful creation of Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci drawn something like a modern drone or you can say the flying kites or the idea of a aeroplane. And however, he could not invent aeroplane that time but his basic drawing uh, actually assisted the invention of aeroplane at later stage. Michelangelo incorporated classic and religious features in his work in the Sistine Chapel and St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. So you see Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, these were the two masterpiece artists who brought enlightenment during Renaissance. This is another work of Michelangelo's painting. Botticelli is another artist whom we should mention for his intellectual property and creativity. In this slide, if you see this painting, you can see the use of point perspective and the dimension to draw the viewer into the painting. So during that time, it was very advanced thought process and they applied this, applied this uh, modern thinking in their drawing. Uh, still, the modern day painters, they follow this art pattern. So another item is was Renaissance architecture. The, the architecture during Renaissance it was a huge improvement and there are a lot of big dome shaped uh, cathedrals made. In this slide you can see arches of half circle. It portrays the Roman culture. The proportions were more biased on human likeness. Even in modern time, the architectural pattern of Renaissance in the modern days also people studies those architectural patterns. The huge domes of the French cathedrals and basilics French and Italian basilics. They represent the Renaissance patterns. The columns and elements reflect ancient Greece and Rome. So this designing was done by Bronicelli. It was the largest freestanding dome other than the ancient Roman Pathogen. You see some of the work by the Renaissance artist. The art actually develops during the time of Renaissance. Wealthy popes and princes patronized many painters and sculptures who incorporated secular and classic themes into religious topics. The next item we shall talk about is the secularism. So in secularism, the writers began writing in vernaculars or the local dialect or the local language instead of Latin. As you know, the Latin was the language of the churches and the religious teachers, 
the fathers, the bishops, pope, they used to speak Latin and Latin used to be taught in universities. But the writers began writing in vernaculars, in normal language, excluding the Latin. In that time, Dante wrote his Divine Comedy in Italian language and telling the epic journey through hell. It was a comedy, a satire written by Dante. Chaucer wrote Canterbury Tales in English, telling tales of medieval life. So next we shall talk about the humanism aspect which glorified people and human reasons. During Renaissance, the idea of humanism was created. In this picture you can see the detail of Raphael's Sistine Madonna symbolizes humanism. And each character looks like real people with individual difference, muscle tone. And in this picture we can notice the aspect of humanity. This humanism is a result of Renaissance knowledge. Michelangelo's knowledge of anatomy is used to show the details of human form. As you can see in this picture, this is a very famous sculpture of Michelangelo where a naked man he symbolizes the humanism. Humanism also portrayed by Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper in which every figure is distinguishable. Humanists believe that human reasons and logic were as important in understanding the world as religion and intuition. They celebrated the accomplishment of man and looked for inspiration to the ancient Greek and Roman thinker. Michelangelo's Moses shows the attention paid to anatomy and the power of individual. So next we will talk about the theory of individualism, the idea of individualism where emphasis is on the importance of individual and its achievements. You can see a drawing of individualism. There are famous drawings of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, but the most striking drawing is the Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. This is displaying the classic individualism. The sculpture on the left is an ancient Greek statue of Neptune and on the right you can see the people from the Middle Ages. So there is a distinct difference between the sculpture of Middle Ages and the Renaissance architects. During Renaissance the painters used proportion, the muscle tone and the image of a human individual. But during Middle Ages, individual was not given priority. So this is a striking difference between a medieval age and Renaissance sculpture. Now in the next slide you can see there are two models, two sculpture. Now we can compare the same ancient Greek statue to Michelangelo's sculpture of Moses from the Renaissance. You see the idea of individualism is given more priority and individual human form is shown in details in the figure of the Neptune. The medieval Notre Dame Cathedral of France it is compared with the Renaissance St. Peter's Basilica on the right. So even the cathedral's design of the medieval age differed than that of the Renaissance 
the design of basilica and cathedrals so in this video i have discussed about the history of renaissance at the end i can recapitulate that renaissance started in 1300 years and from 1300 to 1600 actually in this time frame renaissance occurred in europe and before renaissance europe was in a, in a dark phase constantly engaged in battles warfare and divided by religion but when these europeans especially the italians northern italians came in contact with the muslim teachers businessmen scholars and the scholars of byzantine empires there the enlightenment occurred by exchange of knowledge by sharing knowledge and generating new ideas and italy was lucky that at that time of the renaissance michelangelo leonardo da vinci these famous artists they were working in italy they were actually born in italy and the rich people gave them patronage gave them scholarship to do more jobs on renaissance and that's how renaissance brought enlightenment and now we can see the result of renaissance and europe is highly benefited and developed so renaissance is a very interesting and important part of history obviously for the european history and for us rest of the world to know how renaissance occurred and what all were the outcomes of renaissance individualism secularism modern thinking generating ideas knowledge sharing knowledge these all are the ideas of renaissance so it's a very important lesson for the student of history and i'm very pleased to give this lecture and i'm very happy that you all were with me so at the end i would like to thank you for staying with me almost half an hour class in some future assignment i'll come in front of you with some new ideas books a new lecture on history thank you very much see you then adios